Hi there, I'm Brian McGovern, Senior Editor with the Investing News Network, and today I'm being joined by Charlie Bowman, CEO of the Canadian cannabis producer Hexum. Charlie, thank you so much for making the time for us. I appreciate the opportunity. Awesome. Well, why don't we dive in? You know, the Canadian cannabis market is a very vast space with a lot of trends, a lot of takeaways, a lot of things have happened so far in 2022. Uh, you, you know, be, stepped into the role of CEO recently. Maybe tell me a little bit about you personally, how that process has been, you know, the changes at the company and, you know, the current situation of the market. No, I think, thanks. Um, I did. In uh, April, I stepped into the role of the CEO. Um, I was running Hexo USA and then and helped the team when they went through some restructuring. Um, as most know, Hexo had acquired a number of companies in 2021 at the tail, at tail end of the year. And it was a combination of getting the, the company aligned to the integration, resetting to the market because the market changes. This is a dynamic market. You have to be, your hand has to be on the wheel at all times. And then it was a matter of just getting those priorities in line. So we reset uh, a number of areas basically to just really focus in on the group. We had a, a large debt that we needed to reset ourselves, which we've done. Uh, in addition to that, it allowed us to align to success there was a number of areas around our how many people, any cost synergies you come out after that many acquisitions, some of your core priorities, what you're going to focus on, what you're not going to focus on, and then and then really looking at that end consumer of how how can how can Hexo be successful to become that preferred cannabis supplier, and so we re we reset our mix so that we would drive profitability, and I think that's probably the biggest area that you're going to see in any of the can Canadian cannabis industries. It's around a lot of people assumed the market would be a lot bigger than it actually was. So they had to reset in the midst of resetting that you also have to realign your spend as well as your profit uh, generators so that you're focusing in on those areas that actually generate your profit. And so for us, that's been a big part of the last uh, couple months. I'm very pleased with the progress we've made. The team has responded fantastic, but the market has responded. Because as I said earlier, the cannabis industry is a unique one in that what was selling two years ago doesn't sell at all today. Consumers look for new products. Consumers look for experiences, whether it's pain management, relaxation. And it's up to the suppliers to, to dial those in and then leverage this wonderful cannabis plant, which has a lot of capabilities into it so that we actually tailor it to that customer experience. And I see that being more of what's going to happen in the future than maybe what we've seen in the first couple of years of just this explosion of this fantastic industry. I see. I hear you. Speaking on the future, you know, this year has been a really difficult one for the stock market when it comes to Canadian cannabis companies. Mm -hmm. We've had the chance to speak with quite a few selection of uh, financial advisors, other experts following the market who have a very down sentiment on, on this space. I'm wondering from your perspective in your conversations with potential investors, uh, current investors, how do you paint the picture of the outlook or the upside or how do you see you know, that turnaround really happening? No, and we're not immune to that. You know, We've seen the decline. And in some cases, um, the way the, the, the company had structured a debt to take on those acquisitions was driving that stock price down. Uh, for us, that was the very first thing that we had to address is to reset the debt. And that's what we did uh, just recently. Um, and then, then to your other side of this is about where we're at. You know, if you take a look at, at Hexo stock, it's extremely low. It's a penny stock at the moment. And if you take a look at, you know, what would make an investor be excited about investing in this or what would, why would you choose to put, you know, two, three, four, five, six, ten thousand dollars into Hexo versus someone else? One of the things that when I took over, the very first thing I did was to clean up the balance sheet, uh, to get rid of the impairments, to get the thing realigned. Assets that weren't going to be profitable or assets that were legacy that were on the balance sheets, we moved them off very aggressively. 
And the goal was let's take these movements very quickly, clean the balance sheet up because our predictions was the country was gonna go into some form of a recession. When recession happens, people tighten their income. At that point, cash becomes king. So you have to basically be able to stretch your cash for as long as possible. Combined with the fact that you have to have the brands that you have in the market to be profitable so that those products that you're generating uh, revenue from are also generating you know, positive cash flow across the board. And so that was the first major two steps that we went through. In some cases, I think because of the magnitude of that debt that was brought on, uh, we had to do it much more aggressively than what you would see in, let's say, traditional businesses. But it's allowed us to be reset. And as we start to come out in Q4 and then ultimately in Q1, you're starting to already see, especially when we do our pro forma that'll come out with we do our earnings in September, um, you'll start to see more and more of, of how our business has turned the corner. Now, the key here, as you said, is why would investor put your money into it? You're, you're at the dip and at the trough and now you're going to go up. It's around how are you controlling your spending? Are you driving your top line revenue into the core market? And for us, that's the Canadian retail market and medical market. That's our core markets we focus in on. And then it's around what are you doing in that product mix that's going to make you consumers want more? How are you driving up that consumer experience with your THC, THC your terpenes, your flavonoids, your minor cannabinoids? What product form are you bringing it to? We have a uniqueness in that we have a straight edge, which is one of the best pre-rolls. It's, it's consumer friendly. It's, it's very discreet. Uh, it, it, it is one of the most uh, repeat sales to all of our retail uh, players. They talk about how fast consumers come in and actually purchase the product. And so you have to build off your strength. And I think the other side is the cannabis industry has to recognize who they are and who they're not. Um, we are a cannabis company. We understand the structure function of cannabinoids and, and how those work in your body and how to basically deliver those into the areas. And so that's what Hexo brings to the table. That's what the Redican brings to the table, original stash and our different brands. But so many of the, the cannabis companies tried to be everything. And so I think if, if someone is looking to make the investment into a cannabis company that's focused in on cannabis, that has a leading market share in Canada and, and, and is delivering those areas of what you need to have growth, I think that's why we, we would be an investment partner. I think it's a great question. I hear you, hear you. You know, you, you've talked about some of the things that have uh, changed within the company. I'm wondering as the, you know, your deal with Tilray was confirmed uh, recently, mm -hmm. if you can tell me a little bit about coming out of that, sort of what are the immediate goals for the company uh, before the wrap up of 2022? Oh, you know, um, the Tilray refinancing of the debt that went on, uh, they, they are our largest debt holder. Uh, in that they purchased about a hundred and rounded up about $180 million of debt. What that allows them to do is to take, if they choose to, they can enact on that. Uh, I think it's $40, 40 cents a share that they have the ability to do it. And then they can acquire those much shares. Right now they are a debt holder into the, into the organization. And what it allows us to do is there are certain synergies that the partnership, the alliance can potentially bring to the market. There is some procurement. There is clearly some logistics that we've seen. Everybody has seen the price of gasoline and fuel surcharges. And so by being able to bundle uh, shipments in different parts of the country, it allows us to, to basically have a full truck at all times. And, and that's wasted money. So that's, that's an excellent one. Uh, the other areas around how we can buy insurance and in different areas that comes through. So we've identified uh, $80 million, $40 million a piece of each company, which are true synergies uh, by, by the two companies working in this alliance. We are independent companies. We have our own brands. We have our own commercial channels. We have our own financial teams, all those areas that comes through. But there is some areas around this alliance that, that can basically reset. And our goal has been from the onset is that we're going to continue to deliver this cannabis experience, we're focusing in on, on the cannabinoids. That's what we bring unique to the table. We focus in on the health and wellness and well-being of our customers. And we have a number series of products that we can tailor, but we're not a brand company. We have some leading brands, which are great, but a brand company 
requires tremendous amount of money to have products across all different segments. Tilray will be a brand is a is a major brand company and will be a super brand company in the future. You can see the way that they have some synergies areas there. We are a cannabis company, and we understand the structure function of not just the endocannabinoid system and the, and, the, and the cannabis that we can deliver, but also how to put those cannabinoids, those flavonoids, those terpenes in the right structure that, that medically help you, that physically help you reduce stress and the others. And it's funny, I had a, uh, a couple of the folks that work for us here. He goes, I, I didn't really believe you. So I tried what you said, this product should do this, this product will help you in this area. And this can do, he goes, you were right. I said, well, I, I you know, I, We've worked a long time in this space of understanding what the body and the different areas around antioxidants and other, other natural ingredients, the body's pretty straightforward. The trick is, is to get those cannabinoids in the form that the body wants. And then the body does what the body does. It's so fantastic. That's, that's the beauty of the cannabis industry. It allows the body to do what it was designed to do by mother nature, point blank. I gotcha. Charlie, could I ask you, could you give us an update on the NASDAQ listing requirements for HEXO and how things are standing at the moment? Yeah, Maybe a little they, bit also about how a company deals with that process when it goes on. Well, you know, that was the curveball as soon as I had uh, taken on that we were below the level that they wanted us to be on the NASDAQ. And so the initial stages for us was, um, you know, align the cost structure so that we can get for success. We had too much spending going on, not just in SGNA, but just overall external consultants. Something that we've done now, we make the decisions as the management team. And, and if we make a mistake, we own the mistake. There is no, this person did it or this person did it. It's we did it. If we get it right, we also did it. And by taking that ownership in and then resetting those goals, as I said down, every sale now is profitable. That wasn't the case a couple quarters ago. We've realigned that we've taken out cost of goods, not just in cost of goods of sales, not just in cost of goods to serve, as we talked about some of the things with the sale rate, the till rate with the cost of service, but we've also done it on cost of goods of manufacturing. And so what we have to do is drive that profitability, which will translate to the consumers that there's more profit here, as well as this top line growth that's being maintained. And then to your point, stock will rise and we have the opportunity to be able to deliver it. We've seen it in the last bit. We're starting to have conversations like yourselves and others, which we're starting to see some positive momentum. Um, it Status quo was not sustainable for Hexo. It had to be fixed. The good news is we've taken those measures. We've talked to the NASTEC. We've talked to different investors of what they're looking for. And the first sale of us is, is to drive that, that, that stock price up to the same level around 40, 50 cents. Get to that level first. And then there's some new brands that we have that are very unique that I think are going to be extremely exciting for the market to see. We have some new strains that we've developed over the last uh, two years that were kind of on the shelf that we've now can tailor those into women's needs, can tailor those into anxiety relief, can tailor those into pain management. We're going to be launching those uh, over the next step. What was exciting to me, every board across Canada said, whatever you're doing is working. Your service levels have never been higher. The quality of your product has never been better. And we see it, our customers are seeing it, and, and that positive momentum will translate into higher stock prices. I hear you. Maybe as a last thing, as you mentioned, the readjustments and focusing on specific uh, sections of the market, mm -hmm. how do you see Hexo and the larger pool of Canadian uh, producers, how do you see them playing a role in the U.S.? A lot has been made about the potential for federal legalization in the U.S. and what that could mean. Um, I'm wondering how you see that, that, that road and sort of what you tell investors when they ask you, when are you going to the U.S.? How can we get to the U.S.? What, are, what, are the, what does that look like in your mind? So um, I, have a, I, have a, I have probably a skewed sense of, of the viewpoint. I am an American. Um, I, we started Hexo USA in Fort Collins, Colorado, with the intention of it to being into the minor cannabinoids. So to understand all the aspects that we could do with uh, cannabis beyond THC, what we could do for extraction, what we can do with cultivations, different strains that work, 
whether we're working with hemp, whether we're doing with marijuana, it was irrelevant. Basically how to take a look at that structure function of those minor cannabinoids and then how they would be basically be able to how to position those into the marketplace. Now with me coming up north and helping to run the company and working forward to, uh, you know, and uniting those two fronts, the new, the latest bill that was proposed addressed a lot of the issues that were, that were dragging around. The first element that came in is you actually had the FDA, the uh, Alcohol and Firearms Tobacco and the Tax Bureau working as a single unit as opposed to each individual coming up with a solution because the three of them have to be aligned to make this work because they have the infrastructure. The second layer that they tiered it, they didn't just, you know, the Canadian market has put in basically a peanut butter and spread it, said, whatever this is, doesn't matter what your scale is, here's your spread and here's your tax, good or bad. What we've learned is that punishes and it encourages people to overspend. It punishes a small producer and it encourages the larger producer to overspend to basically get to that low cost of production. And what you find in with those low cost of production, you have poor quality, but you also end up having stranded assets, which you've seen now everybody, ourselves included, ripping out assets because you basically overproduced. Now, I, I can't validate the number, but I was told that there was over 800 tons of capacity in the Canadian market. And again, I can't validate that. But I can get pretty close to that number just by talking to a couple senior executives and others. And you take a look, that, that number is, is way out of line of what actual the actual market demand is or will ever be. So it showed you that there was a, a bad behavior of overproducing. So in the US market, by basically tiering that tax base, they've placed in an opportunity for us that yeah. the medium craft can grow, the boutique grower can grow, the industrial grower can grow and the leading companies can grow, but you pay your fair share. And nobody minds paying taxes as long as it's fair and you move forward, you would go on. And so I think that was an area that comes out. There was also several elements in that to take care of some of the social injustice that has gone on and that's being addressed. I'm, I'm an optimist. I see this as an excellent opportunity to generate tax revenue in an area that some call it a sin tax, some call it a, a marginal. I see it first in the medical area coming in. And if you've ever been where you can see the benefit that cannabis has supplied or helped a uh, cancer patient, if you've ever seen the, the ability cannabis has been able to help, whether it's CBD or THC based, irrelevant, just cannabis in the plant as a whole, you can see the benefits of pain management, the ability of what they can do for inflammation, that needs to be in the US market. And then we can take the recreation and the others, you allow the states to take care of it, which is exactly the way the bill was kind of designed and placed in. So I think, I think it's a good bill. I hope it passes. I think from a standpoint of looking at the need of tax revenue, this is a perfect place because you pay as you go. So that's where I'm at. And as far as we've done, we've set up Hexo USA. That particular site has the ability to do both THC and CBD in, in its jurisdiction. We have permits other areas, which, like I said, gives us the flexibility to grow. We will wait in, until the, the legislation catches up with us. But it's it's super exciting in the U.S. And I, and I wouldn't stop there. You've got great things going on right now in Mexico. You've got outstanding opportunities in Brazil, again, in that area around the medical. And again, it's about getting that benefits that cannabis can do, those minor cannabinoids combined with THC to help people. And, and that's what we should do is from a standpoint of being able to help people help themselves, let the body do as the body was designed with the endocannabinoid system is what we focus in on. Well, Charlie, I think we'll have to wrap it up there, but I'll ask you to come back to give us another update on the international, on the progress of those international markets then. Well, listen, I appreciate the time. I know you guys have a lot of options and I appreciate you keeping us in line and I look forward to the next round and, and thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. For the Investing News Network, I'm Brian McGovern. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for even more expert interviews and our weekly roundup. We'll see you next time.